Here's how we install the Pro Kit. After you've opened the large box, the first thing to do is, is to remove the 10 by 10 smaller box inside. The box contains the heart box and the jumbotron, along with accessories you will need for your installation of the Pro Kit, such as the nets, your board couplers, stanchion clips, remote control, and net ramps. Once you removed all the pieces from around the box, you may remove the bubble wrapped piece, which is the heart box unit. Gently slide out and set aside. To remove the jumbotron from the box, secure by the pressure fitting and put the other hand on the bottom of the box and gently lift up. It'll pop out of place. Next, begin by unwrapping the heart box. Unfold the bubble wrap and move the cables to the side. Remove the USB dongle and the power cable from inside the heart box. Plug the USB dongle into an available USB port located on the side of your computer and the power cable into its associated power receptacle. Now unplug the two original Molex cables from your main board. Then take the two wire clips and attach to each side of the metal enclosure of your old board. We should note that in this picture we have taken out the original PCB board. You do not need to do this. You can leave your PC board inside of your cabinet and place the heart box in front of it. Once the heart box is securely in place on the platform, connect the large cluster of wires to the large wire clip. Leaving the six pin Molex connector and the black barrel connector free. Connect your HDMI cable to the CPU and its wire to the small wire clip. It should be tight on the one end, but still have some slack where the connections are to the unit. Drape the remaining wires outside the base cabinet. Install the upper cabinet over half of the bottom cabinet. You will need someone to hold it in place or something to rest it on. Make sure the heart box power switch is in its off position and connect the original Molex cables to the matching receptacle on the heart box. Be sure that the connectors are securely fastened and that the top and bottom clips on the Molex connectors click into the receptacle. Fold loosely the wire cluster with the two white multi-wire cables. These are located at the away side of your game, which is on the left side of your table when facing the coin door. Feed up through the hole in the upper cabinet. Once the wires are through, you can move your upper cabinet fully onto the base and bolt it down. You do not want this thing falling on you. Next, we are going to run our wires. There are two white four conductor wires, two goal wires, clearly marked with red for away and blue for home. We're going to take the longer four conductor wire and the red goal light wire and run them beside the rod track to the away side of the table. Once again, that's the left side of the table when facing the front of your game. You can tuck the wire in the original wire clips or use some of the smaller wire clips we have supplied. Next, take the remaining wires and gently fold them over and tuck under the player rods. Pull the remaining wire through and run to the home side's original boo button. Detach the button by popping off the button module and unscrewing the threads from the button housing. Open the button box with the extra pause button located on the side and remove the metal fitting. Unscrew the metal fitting, then peel the backing of the double-sided tape and align the holes in the button box with the original button hole. Make sure it is level and press firmly. Install the metal fitting and securely tighten. Run the white multi-conductor wire with the red and black pause button wire through the metal fitting and into the box. It may be easier to gently fold over the wires when running them through the fitting. Be careful not to pull too hard in case one of the ends is caught. The multi-conductor wire is color coordinated. There's a black wire with three daisy chained wires connected to it. There is a red wire to go to the red button there's a blue wire to connect to the green button and a yellow wire to connect to the puck drop button. Each button gets a black wire connection connected to the opposite terminal on the button. The pause button is connected with the two wire multi-connector. It does not matter which connection goes to which terminal on the button. 
Here you can see the black daisy chain wire being connected to the opposite terminal on each button. Next, connect the pause button. Begin by popping out the button and connecting the two wires to the two terminals on the button and replacing it. Clean up the wires and replace the button housing top onto the button housing and screw tight. Run the home goal light wire along the wall over the player rods and through the middle bolt hole. Work your way back on the wires you have just installed by tucking them above the player rod plastic blocks. You can also use the small wire clips we have supplied or the original game's wire clips. Push the excess wire through the opening of the upper cabinet into the base cabinet. Next we'll do the exact same steps for the away side. Run the away goal light wire through the middle hole leaving 2-3 to three inches and tucking the excess wire above the player rods along the track down into the base cabinet. There will be only one multi-conductor wire for this button box. It connects the exact same way with the colored wires going to the colored buttons and the black daisy chained wire connecting to the extra terminal on each button. Replace your nets and install the ice surface. Make sure both goal light wires are ran through the corresponding bolt holes in the ice surface. Grab your plastic T-bolts and screw into the outer bolt holes of each player side. They have already been pre-installed and should thread easily. It's important to make sure they are going in straight. Tighten till they are flush with the ice surface, but not pinching the ice. Make sure there is not a gap between them and the ice surface, and they are parallel with the player side. Next it's time to install the boards. Carefully lay out each side of the boards the way it is in the picture above. Next we're going to install the board couplers. Now you're going to gently lift up one side of your boards. The fitting is a push fitting so it'll fit snugly into each side. You may need to wiggle it, um, but it should fit seamlessly. Once you have one side pushed in, you're going to grab the other side of your boards and you're going to once again wiggle and push together. Once complete, you can do this on the other side as well to match. Next we're going to install the top dasher behind the nets. Um, there are two of these top dashers, each are marked home and away. The home side, once again, is when you're looking at your game and you're seeing the coin door, is the right side of the table and the away side is the left side of the table when you're looking at your coin door. Attach the top dasher with the four stainless screws that are provided for each side. We do have additional screws in the bag, so don't be worried if you have some extra. Once you have completed both sides, take the boards and lean them up against the wall so you can apply the seam decal to cover the seam. The decals we have supplied are longer than needed so you can cut them down to the proper side. Next we're going to install the net ramp. Take the nut that is provided and place it over top of the screw behind the net. You want to leave a little bit of a gap so the net ramp can slide under the nut. This should be a snug fit, not too over tight. You want it just to be snug. The boards will also hold this in place. Install your assembled boards on an angle Rest the other side of the boards on your fist or an object to run the goal light wires through the provided hole in the board. It may be a little tricky and you may need a little force, but you want the wire to be through an inch to an inch and a half above the coupler. Once the goal light wires are through the coupler on each side, you can push gently down on each end of the board to snap in to the T-bolt fitting. The board should feel snug in its place. To install the goal lights, make sure that the screws are loosened for the terminal blocks and you want to make sure that the red wire is connected to the right side of your goal light. Um, we have now also added a red and black dot to indicate which wire goes to what side on the goal light, but just make sure that it goes to the proper side or your goal light will not work. Once you have the wires inside the terminal, 
tighten with a screwdriver. Make sure the wires are securely fastened and then re-thread them back down through the hole in the coupler and have your goal light rest on top. Now it's time to install the glass. Each piece has a numbered sticker and the sticker should be on the outside of the glass. Here you can see the layout of the glass pieces. We recommend you install the corner pieces first, then the piece behind the net. Once you have installed all four corners, the glass behind the net should pinch the front face plate of the goal light between it and the back wall of the board frame. Once one side is complete, install the metal stanchion clips over the top seams of the glass with the larger curled side on the outside of the glass. Continue on with the front and back side glass. Install the HDMI box to the back side of the base cabinet. Start by peeling off the double sided tape and mounting directly to the left of the middle seam of the base in line with the serial sticker on your unit or just below. Make sure you have enough room for the HDMI and power cable to attach also only having a gradual bend to the cable. Locate your bolt hole on the underside of the upper cabinet. If you do not have this hole, you will need to make one. You can go to the how-to video we have on making the Jumbotron bracket hole. Apply pressure on the bracket to the outside wall of your cabinet while threading. Finish tightening with a ratchet or wrench. If you have purchased the V2 series, it's now time to install the camera. Gently push the USB through the given hole in the Jumbotron arm, running the cable all the way through the arm. You can snap the camera housing onto the Jumbotron arm with the sticker on the camera facing the smaller length of the Jumbotron arm. Next, we attach the Jumbotron arm to the Jumbotron. Begin by running the cables through your Jumbotron arm. Do not tug hard on the cables. They should slide freely through the arm. Loosen the thread on the pressure fitting of the Jumbotron. Do not remove completely, but enough so that the arm can slip in freely and be pushed to the back of the fitting. Once you feel the arm hit the back of the fitting, hand tighten so it is secure, but do not over tighten at this time. Grab the fitting with one hand and the middle of the bend in the arm with the other. Lift off the ground and rotate the arm so it is perpendicular with the ground. Now is a good time to tighten the nut. With your cotter pin handy, Thread the cables and arm through the Jumbotron bracket and install the cotter pin. Connect the 6-pin connector from the Jumbotron to its matching housing which is connected to the wires beside your HDMI box. Make sure the connectors are fastened properly. Clean up the wires, plug in the main power cable to your original game. Flip the switch on the heart box and play hockey. Welcome to the next level.